I would like to welcome our brothers and sisters who've not logged in. You are more than welcome. And those who will watch this live recording, be assured that the Supreme, the Father, Mother, God, in the presence of the company of heaven, in the presence of all the great spiritual teachers and the ascended masters, know you by name and they know your heart. So throughout our spiritual soiree, just be still and if anything comes up for you that may cause you any disquiet or restlessness, name it, bless it, and then release it to the light. I'd encourage you not to struggle, for that are the dark forces, those negative energies that seek to cause soul entrapment. So let us begin now, and we light our candle in celebration of our love of the Cosmic Christ. And we light it as a gift from our heart in thanksgiving for all the requests that we shall bring here this evening and in thanksgiving for the cosmic Christ touching your hearts and answering prayer so we light this light for spiritual healing not just for ourselves but for the whole family of God, from all fates and none. So we light this light to symbolize our love of God, our love of the Supreme, in the presence of Gaia, in the presence of the nature spirits and the tree divas and elementals, in the presence of Kuan Yin, Mother Mary, Isis, Magdalena, in the presence of the Lord Buddha, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna, Sri Chimoy, Francis of Assisi, Claire, Colette, Therese of Avila, Therese of Lisieux, Therese of Calcutta, Hildegard of Bingen, Julian of Norwich, Osho, Rumi, Mia Baba, and the Lord Christ. Let us come to this table and let there be no fear in our heart. Let us be still now. Let us be still. Before we begin, I would like to share with you two short quotes from, the, from His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And the first was given to me just before I started, and I take it that it's meant to be read and to be shared. And the title of this first reflection is Self-Importance. Tolerance and patience with courage are not signs of failure, but signs of victory. Actually, if you are too important, that's a real failure. And the second reflection is on moral values, cause and effect. One's own actions creates one's life situation. So I give thanks to God for His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who speaks in simple terms and whose words our truth. We begin by playing a beautiful track which I have played for a number of years now in different countries of the world where I led retreat days and healing days and I can tell you it really touches the heart. It's called How Can Anyone Ever Condemn You? How Can Anyone Ever Tell You you are not beautiful. You are a child of God. And no one has the right, not your husband, your wife, your partner, 
your family, your boss, your colleagues, not even your religious leaders, <clears throat> have the power or the authority of God to tell you that you are not beautiful. So I would like you to now relax. Just take a deep breath. Breathe in the love that is all around you and that is coming to you right now. And be still. Just be still and sense the peace and the love of a compassionate God.
ask of the cosmic Christ, he will do it for us. He will do it for us. I know this to be true. Otherwise my life as a contemplative monk would be hypocritical. As a contemplative who has dedicated my life in service to God for peace and unity and that all faiths will one day become one and sit at the table of God and demonstrate compassion and forgiveness. I know that whatever I ask, the Lord Christ, the Cosmic Christ, He does it for me. I never doubt His promise because I challenge Him to honor his word and his word is truth whether you believe in him or not but I do and that's what I've trained to become a prayer consultant in service to God and many ask for prayer and prayer is always answered it's not answered on high days, holy days, Christmas or Easter. It's answered when the soul is ready to receive the miracle from God. And often when people complain that their prayer hasn't been answered, it's because A, they do not trust. Maybe B, they're forever incessantly asking the Father, Mother, God over and over and over and that demonstrates a lack of trust and a lack of respect for we only need to ask once and then we say thank you but today in society many are so used to having everything their own way like in a supermarket Everything has to be instant, with minimal input and minimal effort. Prayer is not like preparing a five-minute instant meal in the microwave. It involves some boundaries and ground rules, and one is to be in the right place, to center yourself, to come into the presence, of the Creator who formed you in your mother's womb. Fact. To honor the divine within you. To make time to listen to that inner voice of spirit speak to your heart. Although many complain they don't hear the spirit. Well, of course they don't. Their television is on. Their mobile is ringing their landline is ringing or they've got people coming in and out chitter chatter to listen to the voice of God to listen to the cosmic Christ speak to your heart or your spiritual teacher you need to be a person of prayer and that involves fasting and discipline but a lot of people today would rather not do that they would rather pay somebody to do it for them or run to someone who tells fortunes. The angelic realm are free. They always tell us the truth. They never fail us. And I'm going to begin by inviting you to repeat after me or to say it quietly to yourself or failing that, to be aware of the words I'm saying. I'm taking the entrance prayer from the interior castle by a great spiritual teacher, Teresa of Avila. I cross the bridge into the silent bliss of my castle. I close the drawbridge and forbid all outside influences from entry into this holy place, my soul. Here in my castle, 
I am alone with God, under God's light and companionship, I discovered the depths and the beauty of my soul. I embrace the power of prayer. I open myself to divine guidance. I surrender myself to become as a channel for grace, healing and service as God directs my life. Now let us come and let us visualize that we are in a beautiful garden, a beautiful garden, and we can hear nature at her best. But in this garden, there is a bench and we sit there and we can hear the birds, we can hear every animal made by God, chunnering away. But we notice in the distance, in the corner, there's a door and something speaks to our heart. Go towards the door and knock four times. So we honor our heart and we proceed towards the gateway of this old door that's almost hidden because of the foliage of the wisteria and the ivy. So we dutifully honor our heart and we knock four times. The number four in numerology, in angelology, is the number for angelic miracles. And on the fourth knock, we can hear the door being unlocked and it's open to us. And a shaft of light flows through this door and it welcomes us. And a voice says, come in and it calls us by our name and we sense in our being that we are at home. There's a familial feeling about this place that we've been here before and that is true. It is the eternal city where we were a being of light before we incarnated on earth. Cosmic Christ is calling us to come back to our spiritual home. And as we enter the mist, we can hear voices that mean something to us. They're voices from loved ones that have crossed over, welcoming us, calling us, come, do not be afraid. All will be well. We do not see them, but we hear their voice, and there is a sense of joy. And as we continue to walk through the mist, there before us is the most beautiful oasis. It is a peaceful place. By the large oak tree, we are guided to sit with our back to the tree divas in the tree. And as we relax and get our composure, we close our eyes and we hear voices, angelic voices, and we can hear soft music. And as we open our eyes to investigate, there stands the Cosmic Christ with Mother Mary Magdalena, with Kuan Yin, Isis and Gaia. And they sit around us and they invite us to take their hand. They invite us to relax 
First, they invite us to take a deep breath, non-labored, and breathe in their love for us. And we hold that breath. And now we release in our out breath that which is troubling us, that which brings us here. And now we connect with the rhythm of our breathing. And our heart is at peace. Our heart is completely relaxed. And we hear the great trees of Avila who joins us say, let nothing disturb thee, nothing affright thee. All things are passing. God never changes. Patient endurance attaineth to all things. Who God possesses is nothing, in nothing is wanting. Alone God sufficeth. And Mother Mary asks you a simple question. What ails you? We are here to help you. What is it that is causing you anxiety or distress? You have a request for us. And we know many requests are going to be shared with us. But first we need to hear your request because we honor the divine in you, for you are a beloved of God, you are a child of God. And now you share from your heart the request, and a weight is lifting from you, and the Christ lifts his hands towards you, in benediction and he says whatever you ask in my name I will do it for you so ask me now to release you to set you free from that which assails you that which troubles you that which causes you real disquiet and pain I am your God, and I will honor my word, but you must use your gift of free will to ask for my help, because I cannot force my will on you, even though my Father, Mother, God created you. You have to initiate the request, so we bow our head. And we now quietly ask the Christ. <clears throat> and as you bow your head, we also ask for our dear sister Mary in Blackpool and her daughter and granddaughter. For Shannon. And all who are struggling to come to terms with the flooding that took place in Calgary. For Lisa, known as Lee, and her husband Louis, for Pauline and Ian, for Betty and Neville, for Rosemary and Peter, for Sister Miriam and her mom in New Zealand. For Sister Miriam in Stockport, Greater Manchester, and her poorly father. For Sister Sue and her daughter, and her family, and their business venture. For our dear sister Eleanor, and our dear sister Elizabeth, her son Larry, and Kelly. for their friends who are in need. We bring palm, we 
bring Jesse who's asked for prayer, for Brielle Veronica Downs, a young 19 year old girl with pancreatic cancer and who's very ill. And also for Dean who's 24, dying of cancer of the lung. We bring Sharon in Portsmouth who's unwell. We also bring Krisha, who asks for prayers for Ashley Morrison, Eloise, and J.F. Greer. We also ask prayers this evening for what's happening in Egypt, in Syria, and in Afghanistan. We also bring our brother Nelson Mandela and his family. We bring every child of God who is hurting, who is afraid, who is frightened. And we bring your requests. We pray for all of you who have joined us. We pray for the members of spiritual networks of Heart to Soul Prayer Partners for Peace, for our brothers and sisters of the Teo community of St. Francis, for the Field of Dreams. We pray for all religious leaders that they will come back to their heart. And for our present Pope, Pope Francis, that he will not be discouraged. Let us now come to the Christ and let him touch us because he is here. we are loved. We are loved. Let us be still and let us celebrate that love and let us now give thanks to the cosmic Christ for the prayers that we have offered for they've already been answered and now let us trust with gratitude in our heart. And now let us go from this place and let us let our light shine for the glory of God, for the salvation of lost souls, for those who are locked in fear and 
for those who live in fear of God that they will come back to their beloved heart. We offer you this, O oh beloved Lord, and we thank you for the gift of life stream and for touching hearts. Amen. And now I would like to wish you, my brothers and sisters, a peaceful night, a blessed night. Namaste. Shalom. Inshallah, Paxet Bonum. Om Shanti. Solo de Caritas. And may the peace of your God go with you now and lift you up and sense that peace.